Hello everyone, this is Game Frost. In today's video, we are going to review the $10 Radeon HD7570. The $10 GDDR5 graphics card I bought from eBay. The Radeon HD7570 has been quite popular back then. I think back then in probably like 2017, 2018, it started getting cheap. And many people were actually buying this for actually a decent price, sometimes $15, $14, 13 And surprisingly, I actually got the Dell GDDR5 variant for around $10 on eBay. Um, after I switched out um, my Fire Pro S7000 to a GTX 1060, as most uh, viewers of my channel know, um, I was actually quite thinking about trying to do like a video, uh, like a similar video to the Quadro 400, which was actually quite popular back in 2019. So I wanted to make this uh, low budget video because, you know, I always want to stay budget friendly. And I just want to see if this graphics card can actually handle, um, you know, many, many games. So um, this video is kind of unscripted. So I'm going to read what is based on tech power. up. So the Radeon HD7570 was a graphics card by AMD. Launched on January 5th, 2012, it was built on the 40 nanometer process and based on a Turk's graphics processor. So basically, this is TerraScale 2. The card supports DirectX 11.2, so it's not DirectX 12. It's only up to 11.2. It has... Uh, 716 million transistors 480 shading units so that's actually pretty good for a ten dollar card it has 24 tmus and eight ROPs and for the base model it actually is paired with a, um, one gigabytes of GDDR3 but we have the GDDR5 variant so we're gonna have better bandwidth so performance will actually be a lot lot better and this is actually connected to using a 128-bit memory interface bus. So basically, it's operating at a frequency of 650 megahertz, and the memory is running at 800. It is actually a single-slot card, and it does not require any additional power. It's basically rated at 60 watts maximum. And it actually, for, for my card, it has uh, two display uh, connectors. It has a DVI and also display port. So this is actually pretty good. Now, the downsides with this graphics card is that it uses PCIe uh, Express 2.0. Um, it is a Time 16 card, but it does use uh, 2.0. So yeah, the Dell variant is actually pretty solid and I just basically got this for around $10 and now we're going to see how well this card goes. It's so hard to open my eyes I'm blind to the light from the sky I'm dealing with things I can't write And all of you know It's been no easy road But I keep working harder Going harder just to prove something Burning out I can't do shit for weeks Guess I prove nothing Everybody wants my work for free I know you have the money Things are looking different I'm not putting up with you Not anymore And I know you think you're still can take advantage And you always took my humbleness for granted But I know my worth you can't take that away Oh, 
and shattered. Stabilize. There is no escape. Fate is upon you. We go!
suspect or suspects have been reported near your location. We'll move to block him. A patrol car has been dispatched after the suspect. Cutting through. Cutting their vision. You're Reloading. Walking sight. Standing. Nice. We show them their place. I keep them there. Same. Cutting through. That's how you do it?
land near me. Watch yourself. Ready, set, go! Attention. There is a new king. So in conclusion, the HD7570 is actually a pretty good card if you can find one for $10 or less. Um, to be honest, even though if it's a 1 gig GDDR5 version, there's, I mean, there's other cards out there that's probably GDDR3 or, you know, even DDR2. And some of them will go for 512 me megabytes. So for this kind of price, I think that's actually a pretty good deal. Now, of course, during recording, you know, I had a lot of issues, especially with things with software like OBS, for example, which will literally chop off frames. Some games will actually perform a lot, lot better when OBS is actually turned off. And, you know, games like Valorant, for example, will go up to 144 FPS. The thing is, is that my CPU is still kind of under spec in a way. Uh, the i310-100 is, is a good CPU for you want to try budget gaming, but I, you know, obviously I would recommend i3-12 uh, gen, which is the i3-12-100. In games like Watch Dogs 2, for example, the CPU would actually somehow bottleneck the card, um, as Watch Dogs 2 is kind of CPU intensive. And games like Minecraft, for example, I was actually expecting higher uh, FPS, especially when I had um, all of the settings, you know, cranked to, you know, fast settings, you know, settings that would, you know, optimize, you know, FPS. But it turns out it's not the case. So it was kind of, you know, a hassle to make this video, but I hope you guys will actually like this review video. It took me a long time to make, you know, benchmarking games is not as easy as I thought it would be. Now, having the modded drivers actually was good. And yeah, um, other than that, it was actually a pretty good experience overall. So if you guys want to leave a like, you could drop down a like. And you can also check out my Discord server. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.